Um, o Pedro vai ler aqui. Um pé. A Pedro vai ler aqui. 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 A Pedro vai Sue Horton, Bill Sanson, and Kara S. I don't know if I'll butcher your last name. <laughs> okay. First item on tonight's meeting agenda is the public comment period. And we just ask that the comments be directed here to the table as opposed to across the floor. And we act in a civil manner with each other. That's all we ask. Okay. I'm um, okay. We had your hand up first, please. Yeah, okay. Thank you. And okay. as Lee's doing, please proceed to the podium. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was in attendance at the uh, workshop uh, last Thursday. Uh, the last Thursday workshop, and there was quite a bit of discussion that went back and forth about a zoning code revision or a change to the to the zoning code, and I. I heard a lot of discussion, but I didn't really understand what was going, uh, what kind of a change it was going to be made to the zoning code. And I believe it had something to do with uh, land use uh, considerations, green space area, uh, wetlands, and things of that sort. And I really didn't understand, is there any way in simple terms that you can explain what that proposed change looks like? <laughs> I'm happy to. Would you like me to? If you, if you, if you say it better than I do, that's fine. Well, well, we'll do our best. Thank so, you. in concept, the local law would apply a density factor when calculating allowable number of units or allowable number of lots on the project site. The concept is generally you look at the acreage of the project site. Currently the town code does not include any issues to reduce that acreage in terms of the allowable uses. So in other words, if you had a 10 acre site and it's one unit per acre, regardless of the site characteristics, you'd be allowed 10 units or 10 lots. The concept that the board is considering now is to eliminate from the density calculation areas of the project site which are otherwise unbuildable. And those could include wetland areas, steep slopes that are not buildable, floodplains, floodways, generally regulated areas, because these would not, in, in general, otherwise be buildable. So the concept is, if they're not buildable, they should not be included in the density calculation. So in the example of a 10 acre site, if there's two acres of unbuildable wetlands, the concept would be you would remove those two acres, then apply how many units, one per acre, you're left with 10, not 10, but eight acres, you'd be allowed eight units on that site not the 10 that would be currently allowable under the code. So the concept is to remove the otherwise buildable, unbuildable areas, excuse me, remove the otherwise unbuildable areas from your density calculation, then apply the area of the table. That's conceptually what it would do, is to add a density factor to determine allowable number of units or allowable number of lots on the project site. This issue came from the planning board too when it came to the forefront of the development was done and it was their recommendations that began this discussion. All right. Well, I think where my confusion came in here was that I was of the impression that this, what is now being termed unbuildable portions of a property were previously considered uh, green space 
the required amount of, of the green space. So the green space, does green space have no consideration or, or bearing upon this change? Well, it it's really, it, it, the answer would be no. In the proposed local law, it doesn't address green space requirements. What it addresses is determining the number, again, of allowable lots or of allowable units on a project site. So, again, if an area were regulated in a manner that would be unbuildable, the, the concept is that area should not be factored into the density calculation, the number of units. And that's and that's that's the concept. That's it. It's a, it's it's fairly. I, I won't say. It's not uncommon in many zoning laws currently to have this density calculation to, de to determine the number of allowable lots or units. It's simply not included in posting kill code currently, and the planning board felt that that was something that the town board should consider, and they did advance the concept. So, the the local law is on the agenda to be introduced and then considered at public hearing. I think I'm just going to stay tuned and see whatever else I can glean from this as it goes forward. Sure. Stop in and thank you very much, Lee. Andy, thank you very much. June, thank you very much. Mr. Plant, thank you. And then we'll, thank you. Paul Plant. It's interesting that back in uh, 1986, when I was the uh, environmental health or the associate public health engineer in Rensselaer County, I actually started doing that, telling town planning boards, you know, this is I, I'm not a proven unbuildable area. You're going to have to eliminate them, and I got fired. That's that's all right. That's okay. What I want to do. Uh, one, before I leave, I, I would like a declaration or, or an admission that the uh, lawsuit against Able Park School District is a ruse, is a ruse. But before that, no, let me, before that, I want to go, I want to go, if it ain't a ruse, then let's get the lawsuit going. We shouldn't have to pay money if the school's guilty, then the school should be making us whole but i want to go back last week to what i walked in on at the firehouse early and what i walked in on there was this the big guy the vice president from the hulker there you were standing here mr brzezzi councilman brzezzi was standing here and he had the uh the, the PowerPoint thing. That's how you can tell the real engineers. They got PowerPoint. And he's going around with the, the pointer he's got there. Three times I heard, once I heard him say, you know, what's fair? It's not fair for the people in District 1, that District 2 people don't have to pay. And then he said three times, you got to get this done. You got to get this done. You got to get this done. And you ask him, what he said you got to get these people to agree to water district number two and then what he's saying is well, there's going to be a water district three but we won't tell nobody that and then what we're going to he took that thing i was watching all this he took that pointer and he said watch what i'm going to do he went along the boundary line between one and two you remember that you remember that mr Rick, uh, council i remember the whole thing yeah okay do you remember going along, along the boundary line and then he said, poof, it's gone. Because the day after the ward of district number two is approved, you can consolidate it with number one. That's what he said. Now you got one big district and what you do is you make the people in two pay for some of the expenses in one because you're paying for pumps and you're paying for pipe and stuff, stuff like that. And uh, people in two should have to pay that. So you're going to shift the burden over to us. So the numbers we're being given by this LaBerge crowd are garbage. Garbage. So the other thing, too, is what we're being told about what the project is. I will, I've been going down through, trying to find facts here 
about what's going on. It's like trying to find shark teeth out in the Gobi Desert. But I dig and dig, and I finally found this report that was submitted back in 2022, I think. And I've been going down through that. And in the report, and I got it all here, it talks about this project. We're going to do this, but we're really going to do this too. You're going to Sand Lake. You're going to have a steam pipe up in Vosburgh Road. How can anybody be surprised by this? It's in, in your own report. And I'm going down through looking for the seeker document. And you may get it unlisted, unlisted, and you neglect it. This is back in 2022. I got the dates. You got a, you got an environmental assessment form in there. Not signed by anybody. It says Keith Hammond and Phil that I ain't signed, no dates. Going down through no impacts, no impacts, no impacts. You know, this is a big horn swaddle. We're not being told what really is going on. We should be told what's in that report, which I've written down. We should be told that these numbers we're being given are garbage numbers. And we should be told that Potion Kill has two agreements. One, the water agreement with Troy. And Potion Kill right now, according to the figures, got a contract that amount of 500,000 gallons a day, but only 83,774 gallons a day are used. But as I understand, I've been going down through the the things I'm not a lawyer, Mr. Uh, Gilchrist, but you know, I work at it, try to understand these things. And I'm an engineer, so I don't know a lot of English words, but I go down through. So we're paying according to the agreement, we have to pay the guarantee the 200,000. So the people in Potion Kill are paying. For water, they're not getting. Somebody's paying for it. So you got to pay for 200,000 gallons a day. You're only using 80,000. Where's that other money come from? Then we have a transportation agreement separate. So the water is from Troy. But the transportation is now from Brunswick. So we're paying pipe rent. And then we're buying the water from Troy. And none of this stuff is being told to people. None of this stuff. So people <coughs> come in here, oh, the, how much is going to cost to run a water line into the house? Oh, it's just 21 bucks a foot. If they, come on. 21 bucks a foot. <coughs> Ain't going to happen. But people are told these things by voices of authority. I, I thought the one guy was actually going to take the knee in front of this vice president. You know, start pulling his tug and his forelock. These people come into our town and they lie to us. They give us misinformation, this, this LaBerge crowd. I'm insulted by it. I've been here since 1949. I've never seen this kind of crap. That guy talking to me like I'm some kind of outsider here. So we're being lied to, and I don't like it. And I'm going to do my best. I've been doing my best with my little newspaper to let people know, give them facts because we're not getting facts down here. We're not. All of these meetings, going back to September 27, 2021, we have been lied to, lied to, lied to, lied to, lied to. Misinformation. It just keeps coming and coming and coming. You know, we got another dose of it last Wednesday night down there. And I got told to shut up how many times? Seven, maybe, was it? Quite a few. I think you were asked to allow other people to talk. No. I think they used the word shut up. What I was trying to do is when that guy was putting out falsehoods or misinformation, I was trying to raise my hand and say, wait a minute. And that's when I got told to shut up. It wasn't about anybody else speaking. It was about me and that vice president. And he was allowed to spend all that time lying to people in this town. 
The town board is supposed to protect these people, not sell them out. But they're not being protected. They're not being protected when they are not being given straight facts. When they're being snowed and told, oh, you know, it's just going to be. No, it ain't going to be. Troy can change the water rates anytime they want to. We're not told that. Oh, it's just going to be, well, I've been going down through track and track in the Troy, going back through how many times they've jumped the rate just in the last so many years. If I was better at it, I would find out how much they're jumping it again in this budget, but I ain't been able to dig through. So that's what I got to say. Uh, you know, and again, so what's going to happen with the lawsuit? If, if I've understood it correctly, because there was insufficient grounds found to blame River Park by DEC, I believe the status is that we're not going to pursue. So ultimately, it's a town board decision. If you're correct, there was a notice of claim that was filed approximately a year ago. Yep. And what that is is simply a notice that there may be litigation commenced. It placed the school district on notice. And the basis for that, again, was the DEC report, which identified the highest area of contamination, right, within the area of the school, septic, and leach field area. Uh, in Algonquin states, I believe. Algonquin states, I think, has got higher readings. Also, how <laughs> one of states when I was young was a swamp. Now, Marty, he's been out it's, here. Excuse me, Paul, would you please let Mr. Gilchrist finish? No, just, just very briefly. So th there was no, to my knowledge, nor to the board's knowledge, additional technical data accumulated by the department since then. Yeah. And so the board has looked at this and has determined that based on the evidence currently. There is no evidence. That the town may not pursue at this point formal litigation against the school district. The notice was there to preserve the town's rights to do that in the event additional data was. Sure. Mr. Gilchrist, I, I'm aware of what the notice of the claims does. Sure. Now, the thing is that if it was just a notice of claim and that was put in, but we had speeches here. I mean, it's on the video. We had speeches from council people about you know going on and on and on like you would think that this was open and shut all the time if you go back to all my writings i've been saying it's a scam people they have no evidence and the evidence is more likely that algonquin estates which is upgrade from the school and has real high readings that can't be explained is the source now maybe fracking or who knows they got they got Substandard septic systems in there. It was a swamp. Okay, Paul, well, excuse me. Yep. Okay. Can you please continue to hit the public hearing? Yes. Well, I'm asking. No, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna go home and get my fire going. Thank, thank you, Mr. Gilchrist. Thank you, board members. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Please. Just want to reserve time for uh, item 5B and 6A. Five B and 6A at the podium, so noted. Yes. Thank you. Anyone else? Sandy, please. I just have a couple questions for Mr. Gilchrist and the town board. Um, as you know, my name is Sandra Schuhart, and I'm one of the applicants for the Woodruff Meadows Senior Project. And it's concerning the new local law that's proposed. Um, I would like to know how many applicants in the pipeline um, in zoning planning for the town board would be affected. Current applicants would be affected by this proposed law. At present time, there is only one applicant in the pipeline. Which is us. 
Okay. And the second, my yes. if I could say that's certainly in front of this board. I I certainly have no knowledge about projects pending in front of the planning okay. or zoning board. Okay. So, but, but at this point, that is we we are the, the, the current one. Um, my question and second question that this will be it is how far along in the PDV district application do you feel we are 80 percent 90 percent i know we have to finish the seeker mm -hmm. and then we would have a public hearing so how far along it's been four and a half years that we've been coming in front of the boards i just want to know your opinion of where we are obviously not in the stage one of the application if you want me to respond i i, I don't i'm not going to render an opinion on that because it's to the point where seeker is still being considered okay and a public hearing would need to be then held correct correct and so there's a lot of procedure to go that's not yet determined okay so I, I can't tell so we you can't that. do a percentage no. there, there's okay. different ways okay. that procedurally okay. this no 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 yeah. that's it but but thank you you thank you thank you anyone else All right, if we have no other if we have no other individuals looking to come up for the public hearing, I'm sorry, public comment session, public comment session is now closed. We have a town court minutes, March 14, 2024. Town board minutes, unfortunately, I did not catch those on the 20th on the 28th. Has everyone had a chance to review Sue's minutes from the 14th? So I can move that we accept the town board meeting minutes on the 14th. Thank you, David. And I'll second the motion. All those in favor of accepting the March 14, 2024 town board minutes? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Five zip zip zip. Next item we have is the March 28th. 2024 workshop minutes. Has everyone had a chance to review those? Who makes a motion to approve? And Frank seconds. Thank you very much. All those in favor of accepting the March 28, 2024 workshop minutes? Aye. Anyone opposed? Five zip zip. Don, did you want to report the audit committee? I, yes, we did. We reviewed the bills and found them to be good as okay. David, excuse me again. Thank you very much. Sure. <clears throat> I own an apology for you. No, you no, just have to wear your glasses. This is, this is true. <laughs> I mean, the firehouse had been helping by giving me bigger font, but I'm back down to the small font. So I need them. Please. Okay. $10. All right. It's right in front of me. And I still miss it. My bill. David? Yes. Thank you very much. Do I have? Okay. Thank you very much. Excuse me. <laughs> <clears throat> bigger scopes. Okay. Um, let's see. Is that a precedent? Comment, if I can, public service comment time on the for the assessor's office. The schedule, the, the assessor's office is open for appeals. They have been, they have gone out for people. Just, um, getting in a change in their assessment for whatever reason. The assessor's office is there. They have forms, and Betsy, Michelle, and Diane are most willing to help, and they respond in a very quick manner. So I believe the formal night is the next day is March 28th. May 28th. 28th. So please, if anyone is so interested, make sure you get your application in and your forms in. And you talk with the assessor's office prior to that. And then the final night is, as June said, May 28th. Uh, let's see. We have, for whatever reason, we have not received any other correspondence this week. It was the past two weeks on um, summer. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll wait for the other night. But that's, that's what we have for correspondence. Okay. Next, we have the liaison reports, planning board. 
If you do, would you be gracious enough to give us a rundown? Thank you. Planning board uh, meeting was, uh, was canceled this month. Um, we only have one item on the agenda. That's the Orsini uh, special use permit application. And they have requested more time in order to conduct a uh, noise study. Thank so you. That, that carefully will be on next month's agenda. Thank you very much. Any questions or anything from the board? Nope, thank you. Next item up is the zoning board. Paul, can we get it? If you would, thank you. Uh, we also did not have a meeting this month, so. You were on no. vacation too, huh? No. I was on vacation, but there was no, no applications. So. Thank you very much, Paul. Okay, next, we have the fire company. Please. Anyone care to speak? Um, the chief did not send me his report. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for your cooperation today. We really appreciate that. The chief did not send me his report, so I don't have a report for you tonight. Okay. I, all right. They did drop one off, and we do appreciate it, even though it's in small print again, so I'm having difficulty going through it. But we do thank you very much. For the information that you provided in more seriousness. Okay. Thank you very much, Jim. Okay. Next item up is the library. We did meet this month. Yes, you did. <laughs> I'm Sherry. We met one of the trustees of the library. Thank you, Sherry. Um, the physical circulations, uh, these are our library statistics uh, 1,333. That was the physical, and then the digital ones was 876. Um, programming, our librarian is amazing. Uh, if you guys don't know it, she's amazing. We had uh, 196 people attend different kinds of programming that we had, and over 740 people visited our library in the month of March. Um, I, just the highlights, um, the pre-K and elementary kids with our popular story time programming on Friday. We had a special guest, uh, Giant Angora Rabbit, and Miss Debbie brought him in. Um, our teens, the successful and beginning embroidery program. Uh, all the teens completed decorative egg projects. And on the adults, we have Lucky Night Light program where LED lights were uh, decorated. Well, those are just just one of all the many things that she does. She's really amazing. And some coming up, coming attractions. Um, next week um, on Thursday at 6, um, we're having an author talk, Trent Romer, um, on sustainability. Looks like a really good one. And then um, John has also established this program called Let's Dish and different kinds of cooking and um, activities all related around food recipes, and that sounds like a really fun one. Uh, chicken with the grab farm. That should be next. That'll be next Thursday at six. Um, on 24, the uh, Wednesday watch party, the team movie night, and spring market day. That's a big deal with um, the friends of the library as well. That'll be on May 4 at from um, nine to 12, and um, on Mar or May 9th. Um, at six o'clock, there's an educator and Planned Parenthood will be presenting an adult program for caregivers. And additional information, the Friends of the Library has got a membership drive underway. They also have a couple raffles going on. There's a bookcase quilt and um, excavator hour, three hours. Um, but uh, raffle tickets are $5 each or three for 10. Good? Sherry, thank you very much. <coughs> Did you want to? May I? Yeah. Can you have a talk for yourself? Yeah, um, perfect. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, youth advisory. Um, summer camp is, we're getting more and more people coming in, signing up for summer camp. Uh, is a solid, coming a solid go. Kara is working on the postal filling, and her sister Jenna is working on the sand weekend, uh, doing their best to make it a success. Uh, and just ask for continued participation, which seems to be coming up every day. People coming in and checking in on us. 
the Conservation Advisory Committee. Thank you very much, Pete. And there was no CAC meeting this month, nothing on the agenda. Okay. Thank you, sir. Call? I'm in, I have to call me. And when will that be? Next month. Thank you. Okay. We now move to discussion items. May we, June, if you care to speak up and go with an update on the Veterans Memorial Fund. And again, it compliments you on the hard work that you've done. And DJ, also, thank you very much for all the work that you've done. And this amount of effort. So, um, the um, the information has been uh, put up on the website thanks to Lindsay. So you'll see exactly what we are doing, and we have pictures of like the old memorial that is broken in pieces, and what we plan to do for the new memorial. And we have had our first contribution from um, the Mark Twenty Sportsman Club which um, originally had its original members of the sportsman club were also members of the town that have been very active in promoting the town and uh, so the uh, donation was a thousand dollars from the business association uh, the market <coughs> association and there was 269 dollars that was um, given by ken wilkins that was in a raffle that was donated that. So we have $1,269 to start up on. It's a good start. And we're just trying to spread the word. And if you'd be gracious enough just to spread the word, uh, this is a serious effort. And we would like to try and get this up in completion this year. Okay. Where can uh, one make donations? I'm sorry. Thank you very much for bringing that. Uh, when can make donations here at Town Hall? There is a separate account that's been set aside for donations. Uh, Sue is gracious enough to take him when she's here. And when Sue is not here, and I will be happier, Kara will be happy to take the donations. It is on the website where right now and Sue's accepting those and giving them the bank. Thank you, Sue. Okay. Thank you. All right, next item we have is introductory to local law number four, establishing regulations on large group events. And this is a discussion. If you would care to step to the easel, I mean, the podium, sir, we would be more than happy to hear your comment. And we'll move from there. Thank you very much. And I appreciate you up on the list. Blue Basil, Abbott Drive. Uh, it's local law number four. I just uh, trying to read it. Uh, I believe it. It the intent there is good, but do we need an actual law? That law is very intimidating. From reading it, uh, twenty-five people is considered a large group. I don't know. I've, I've had birthday parties less than with more people than twenty-five people. If I happen to have it, want to use a park or something, I got to go out and get a permit 60 days in advance. I got to tell you how many amplifiers my band is going to be using. It, it seems like it's very, very detailed. And uh, I don't think this town really needs it. I know what you're trying to do. It had, it had to do with the bicycle race last year. Now, there's got to be other means that we could take care of that situation. Just because you want, got one bad apple, you don't throw the whole barrel out. And that's what we're doing here. I mean, that that, that law is intense. Yeah. Very intense. Do you have a suggestion? Pardon me? Do you have yeah. a suggestion? This, I understand that. But I'm just, but Do I have a suggestion? Yeah, like how. Turn it out. No, no, the alternative. Just throw it out. Yeah. I think what if, happened to you. Yeah. It was a lack of communications. That's what it was last no, year. No, I'm not going to the bike race. <laughs> yeah, no, um, that's what, that's what, but the other okay, thing just that, proper order. Yep. The other thing that came to light was the insurance company. 
So the insurance company had stated that it would be a good idea to have something in place so that he knew who was coming into the town. And that for six days. Looking at this, I will agree it's a bit extreme, but it was just something that got passed on from a neighboring town, I think. And we can change however we like. Right, because you know it's it's very like I said, very intense to talk about insurance. If I want to have a birthday party and you know, okay, if it's on my property, naturally there's no problem. But say I want to rent, you know, whatever the, the when the town gets the park over there and you're gonna rent it out as a you know and uh, I want to rent it out. I mean I gotta get an insurance policy. I got to fill out that application 60 days in advance. Filling out the filling out the application that I just read is intimidating. I I I don't think for a town town like that or like us we need that. And especially the only thing this came out, all spade is paid. The only reason it came out is because of the bicycle race. And the problem we had with the bicycle race was lack of communications. And that's half the problem that everybody has. Is lack of communications and I really think that you know if you got time before you put it out there you should really reconsider it because I I don't think it's very good I think this is there's a lot to reconsider in there what's worse is I went on the city of Troy's website to see what they did for their one day permit and it's it's intimidating yeah. You know, there's background checks, there's, you know, possible fingerprinting, there's this and that. And no, you got Little League parades, right. you got Memorial Day parades. Mm -hmm. If somebody's having a 100 year anniversary, say the church or something, they want to have a little parade, they got to do this. You know, uh, quite frankly, is it going to affect the fire company when we have a bank one on our own property? Is it going to affect the fire company when we have a car show on our own property? There's a lot to it. I don't think it should be brought up. We thank you very much for your question. We appreciate that. It's under study. This, like I said, this is a discussion session. Sure. But as June said, the, the insurance company did bring up a point to us, which we have to look at and take a response back to. Mr. Montana. Mr. Gibbons, please. Uh, my name is Martin Gibbons. I live on Route 66. Tonight it was just brought to my attention about this local law. And I don't see anything in your local law about clubs in private property. The example that I'll give you is the Henry Cuts and Rod and Gun Club. They have events over there all the time. Are they going to be subject to getting permits on their own property for events that are usually happening on a Saturday, a Sunday? They also have a part of this law that states the time from 10 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock at night. And at the club over there, it's sunrise to sunset. And on a Sunday morning, there's nothing worse than constant shooting all day long versus a band. I wonder if the town board has looked into the depth of that on a private club, private membership, but the sound effects continue all around the neighborhood. Are they going to be subject to a permit every Sunday? Again, our noise ordinance, because that was one of the things that I had highlighted also on stock for the right after 6 p.m., but our noise ordinance goes to 10 p.m. That's correct. Any other comments referencing <coughs> local law number four? I think maybe we should just mark it up and see if we can. Certainly, and understand, and, and this is for the board members and this for the public too. There's a reason this is marked draft. This is the first time the board has seen this. This did come out conceptually to have some permit or registration system for large group events. It certainly may have been discussed last year, but it's, it likewise came from the town's insurance carrier that this would be 
something to have within the town code is predominantly addressed, not predominantly, exclusively addressed to public property, uh, public streets, roads, public parks, publicly owned property, town owned property. And that is explicitly noted in there? It is. So there are definitions for uh, park and there are definitions um, for public area. So just review that as well. And the, the provisions are required for the parks or the public area, it says defined. It may be viewed as onerous. This is simply a starting point. Think of it as two ends of the spectrum. Right now, there's nothing. And this may have everything just so you could see the types of regulations that many municipalities have concerning these large group events. You can choose to modify this, to eliminate that. It's That's within your discretion. So. This is simply the starting point to, to review. That. So the way it stands right now, it would not apply to events at the fire company or at the gun club. Correct. Let, let, let's review. So in particular, public area is defined as a public street, road, highway, land, place, or open space. The, the open space might be a little bit loose. We'll look at that language. Mm -hmm. But public street, road, highway, and we can tighten that up, land, own, uh, by the town of Post and Kill. That's really, I think, what the intent was. So, it, so it could include a large block party. If you're on the street. It, 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 that if was held on, street. like if a bunch of neighbors got together That's and correct. on a dead end road. That's correct. Right. If you be within would. the public street, then right. yes, this, this could, as currently drafted, right. would, would be true. Is there, is there language that we could use that would eliminate like side road type events that are in Sure you could. That's, yeah. that's okay. why it, this is, again, just in draft form. We can tweak that in okay. the way that you want that. The requirements for the registration or permit application, if they're viewed as too onerous, they don't need to include all of this. But there should be something that you're going to have this kind of system that allows the building department in particular and it's an administrative review to know where, what number of people just those. You, you got to have at least that in there to make this meaningful. Um, and so again, it, it's a starting point, and it's kind of a compilation of a lot of um, provisions that are included in many municipalities. So as a first step, we drafted it to put all of it in so you could see it, and then you can work off of this. I definitely I agree with Lou with regards to the probably less you know, one of the other, you know, the insurance is one thing, but the, the event, the bike events, it's got to be a, a driver of that, at least it seems like it. And 25 people, I mean, if you, if you were at the park and you were like, just grab a, you know, a few families get together, you know, you have to leave someone home because you're at 24. <laughs> <laughs> you're not coming. <laughs> you're not inside. No. I think sure. there, is, and there's, there is stuff in there. That certainly, some go municipalities there. have that. And some have a larger number, and it's yeah. a starting point. And so you can determine if you want to proceed with this. You can determine that. What I was looking for before wasn't really a suggestion of what to do or not do with the law. It was just, is there another mechanism in that would preclude the law by just saying how, how if someone's going to hold an event in the town, is there some sort of protocol or another way of doing this that? make sure that the fire department and the town and the sheriff department all know what's going on even if i think someone's taking a block party and they block out a, a dead end street i think if i was living on it i'd want to let the fire department know that something's going on is there another way of getting that accomplishing that without the local law communication street you have you have your farmers market on saturdays that's a large gathering. It's more than 25 people. So, you're going to be so with the parade. Communication is going to be the key. And as, <clears throat> as, as Andy has said, this is simply an initial offering for our review. We can go through it, shoot through it, and make revisions and move forward. This is not going to come back tonight. It's not going to come back next month. It's going to take time to review and fine tune. We'll talk. The board will take comments from the public and we'll see what can be done. But this is just Andy was gracious enough to put this out 
for our review. And naturally we try and keep our ears open to listen to what is being said and move accordingly. But, and no one's being singled out, despite what somebody may think, the insurance company did bring this to our attention. And that's why we went to Mr. Gilchrist to ask for his a suggestion. And this is just a draft copy. We will listen to what everybody has to say and move from that point. And please continue your input. That's all we're asking. Andy, thank you very much. David, thank you. Frank, thank you. Jim, thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Wayne, thank you very much for making it. Mr. Hart, thank you very much for coming in. Okay. We now have next item on the agenda is continuation of the True Heart PDD Seeker Review. Where do you want to start? <laughs> See where we kind of where we got to look, please. Okay, the last meeting I provided the board with uh, part two of the full environmental assessment form uh, <coughs> for their consideration. Um, feedback I got is that they would like some time to review the part two. Um, at this time, I guess, um, if the board has any comments or questions on certain sections of this um, that I have drafted up, um, we can talk about that now. I can start. I have a couple okay. items I'd like to explain. So, um, for the comprehensive plan on page two, so the PDD said it should be in conformance uh, with the town comprehensive plan. But in the comprehensive plan on page 94, uh, it fits harmoniously within the town fabric compatible with established neighborhoods, conserved natural resources, waterways, aquifers, agricultural land, and family farms. So you had answered yes to some of those. Page 95 complements rural character of the town. Page 100, town will look at cumulative effects of development on water, sewage disposal, soil, and scenic qualities. Page 103, town will regulate the type and density of land development on areas requiring special protection to protect drinking water and aquifer. And then page 104, um, to facilitate senior housing, the town will consider changing the town code to allow multi-unit housing bills in front of the R zones, but they must be compatible with the residential character of those zones. Um, back in 2019, when this first came about, Harold Van Slyke and I also asked if the housing could be more cottage style, similar to Brookside and Sand Lake, and it was stated that you couldn't make money that way. So. We still have that two-story 48 unit, correct? Sure. Okay. Um, page four of the seeker. Could you help me with the detention funds for the water? Um, so there's a half acre, 21,800 square feet, half acre with a person firm to hold that contents of water, right? It's to um, provide um, water quality, water quantity, in accordance with the DEC requirements for uh, uh, stormwater attenuation. So it, it will eventually drain into the wetlands? Um, before it enters. It, it just holds it there and then drains? Yeah, it's not it, it's not retention, it's detention. You're gonna get you get you know, you treat it first like in a four bay. You have like a smaller pond that you treat the water, goes into storage, which is called then the detention pond, which um, they'll you'll get some uh, infiltration and you can't you can't discharge any more water off the site than what was pre existing. 
that's what the rules are. Okay, so how does that come into play with the 9,240 gallons of wastewater per day? Well, the wastewater is treated differently. It's in, it's, it's, in, in the, it's contained in the systems that yeah, the that's, health department. That's all, that's all percolation. And has the health department, we were still on hold with that the last time, right? Have they approved that? Um, not to my knowledge, they haven't approved the final design yet. Okay. But okay. conceptually, the health department has said that uh, they could proceed with, with the design. Okay. Okay, so on page six, um, there's no plan to minimize changes in on the impervious surface or use any impervious materials for drainage. <coughs> But yet, there's 80 percent of the soil is poorly drained. Um, we have 12 acres of the wetlands that storm water from two acres of impervious surface and potential wastewater to travel to. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a full stormwater design yet. Um, DEC encourages um, a green infrastructure in their designs part of their regulations. So in my review, I would also encourage the applicant to consider green infrastructure to help mitigate uh, the amount of runoff even before it gets to uh, the actual stormwater construction facilities. Right, because there are things that can be done instead of just the black top Correct. parking lot. Um, also, in the 100 year and 500 year floodplain, you didn't think that that was. It's, it's on the property, but it's not on the site. Okay. And they are on top of a principal apple though. They are. Okay. And they are in a certified ag district. The only one that's in Posting Hill is supposed to protect the farmland. It isn't an ag district. And they are, and they are removing at least two and a half acres from permanently from the ag district, which kicks that into a type one action. Thank you. Thank you. And board member seven questions. Um, in the last meeting, uh, we had considerable discussion on. On one section of the um, part two of the FBAF uh, consistency with community plans and consistency with community character, um, we had asked the applicant to provide uh, a rendering of the proposed action so that the board can see uh, conceptually what this building is going to look like. So they can they can make a decision on how to answer those last two questions on the FBF or two. So um, if Steve wants to come up and present uh, his rendering and give the board an opportunity to comment. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. So yes, uh, Steve Hart with Art Engineering. So we had worked probably over the last two weeks uh, with the architectural firm, uh, SAR Architects. I think they did a great job <laughs> providing the, the rendering here as shown. Uh, probably four to five different uh, iterations we went through with them, working with John and Sandy, um, basically pounding them again and again to, hey, we need this thing to look rural. Certainly got away from any flat type roofs. Uh, we've got culture stone on the bottom, some vinyl siding, a lot of nice peak roofs, wood features, uh, columns on the decks and some of the entrance ways, et cetera. Again, the building's about two story. You're probably looking at a, a maximum roof height, probably under 30 feet with the top of the roof where you see the shingle in that area. Um, but we had gone back and forth. We, we got a couple different view sheds. So this would be traveling, uh, let's say from John and Sandy's farm, uh, coming down in this direction to look at that view. And we had asked them to provide it, so basically in both directions of travel, you would be able to see uh, what the building and the view shed would look like. So 
again, certainly all the same features on the building, just giving you different angles. If I recall, the closest part of the building was about 100 feet off the road, certainly green space, vegetation, uh, the site would be cut down a little bit, so it would be uh, from the road, be below road level. So um, again, you had some added uh, vegetation. I know working with the planning board, and, if and when we get to that stage, uh, they would be looking at that quite hard. So um, any kind of breakdown character, um, you know, working around the capital region, certainly not this town, we understand. I spent my afternoon going through different codes, uh, densities, building heights, um, SCODAC, which I would consider to be very rural. That's uh, where I do half of my work in the town of East Greenwich as well. Um, basically, almost every zone in SCODAC, with their, there's four zones in SCODAC. Every one of them allows senior housing in it. Um, one zone allows multifamily. Uh, town of East Greenwich are seven different residential zones. Five out of the seven allow uh, senior housing. And it, it just seems to be very welcoming, and they, they allow them up to, let's say, 40 to 50 feet. But I get it. Being here, we want to be uh, a little more rural. So being the two the two story here, I think we we meet some of the criteria that uh, was within that within that zone and trying to keep it in, in character. Certainly, if you come and you have 48 units here, there's nothing in the town. I guess I could say you're in character with right, but we're set back on a 24 acre piece of land. Uh, John and Sandy live next door. We've got a commercial building across the across the highway from us, so. You know, it's, it's hard to say how you compare the uh, rural character of the neighbor and joint properties because there's, there's nothing really out there. Honestly, 30 years of doing this, this is probably the most beautiful building I've ever worked on. I'm happy to be involved, and I certainly hope that, you know, we do move forward with it in this board. <clears throat> you know, I did read some of the comprehensive plan as far as trying to, to, to keep seniors in town. The worst thing that's going to happen in Postal Hills when every senior has to move out of here because there's no housing and certainly they age out of their existing homes. and. You know, so let them go move the colony, then you, the kids will follow them over here as well. So I, I do think this town board would be missing out on an opportunity to approve this project, but certainly we're at your, your pleasure here. Um, as far as the stormwater guidelines, over the last 20 years, DDC has only made them harder and harder and harder. Uh, basically, we, we used to not treat stormwater. We used to be put it in a pond, and then when you detain it, shoot it out into the near stream, even wetlands back in the day. Well, today they make us spend in St. John $100,000 to treat the stormwater, then detain the stormwater, use green infrastructure practices, as, as Judy had mentioned in Wayne as well, and then you get to discharge it. So from those standpoints, never been more stringent as far as uh, uh, treating stormwater separation distances on the septic systems, 100 foot minimum from a wetland. So God forbid a septic system ever backed up or the soil didn't want to accept it starts bleeding out you got 100 feet of you know sewage if it ever happened and certainly it's going to be picked up but you got 100 foot separation before it would ever make it into a wetland so um, so there's guidelines that the county health department DC, DDC put in place as well to, to protect that so um, again I just feel it's a beautiful project I think uh, an absolutely great project for the town post and hill so hopefully it's something we can uh, move forward with um, something for the board to keep in mind we're at the stage where we're just trying to determine what the environmental impacts are this isn't an approval of a project there's still a lot of work to be done to approve the pdd has to be vetted by the planning board so um, right now we're um, looking to the board to make a decision on, on what the uh, impacts are for this project and whether or not they are small impacts, no impact, or a medium or large impact. <laughs> um, without going through every item on this one, Or just the two, right? Pretty much the last two. June was a little, had some questions on, on impacts to um, groundwater and surface water. Maybe we should go there and see if we're still okay with uh, 
how we identify those impacts in part two. That would be item three and item four. We did identify those two as having some impact and uh, went through the list to determine whether it's small or moderate to large. Two uh, three impacts on surface water and four impact on groundwater. We answered the four. We did. Uh, June had some questions. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that the board is comfortable with how we're answering the question. I know you thought it was like small. I, I think it's medium. You're talking D? He's talking with these two things. I guess for the board's consideration is whether or not those impacts are um, mitigated. Um, I mean, I have a real concern for the aquifer. I mean, that's not a. <clears throat> well, last, last month we said we, we said no on those, right? Well, we said that there were impacts, but yeah. all of the impacts are no, the small. Mm -hmm. I, guess what is, I, guess, I guess my question was changed that that would change our decision for last month. Uh, I'm pretty sure, wasn't this form pre filled out? Were, no, I, I filled it out. Mm -hmm. Wayne filled it out. I drafted it. Right, so it was just, this wasn't a final yeah. decision on any of these. So I don't know if anything's changed. I think we're just looking at it. Uh, you know, closely. Because, I mean, you wanted us to look at the end for the character of the town. Right. The character of the town brought me back to the comprehensive plan. There's a lot that it doesn't fit in the comprehensive plan, which I just stated. I, I know that you think that it would have minimum impact and everything for the groundwater and the contaminants that we talked about, but in my mind, I'm definitely concerned. The aquifer is an issue for me. Well, well, any development in town is going to have some impact. Correct. Um, you have to examine what the magnitude of that impact is and whether or not it can be mitigated effectively. And, you know, I think we all agree that the town does need senior housing and we'd like to have senior housing, but is that the appropriate size? And where the location is. So potentially there is um, an opportunity to mitigate the size. Um, either reduce the number of units, reduce the size of the building, change the configuration. Um, those would be the kind of mitigating factors to um, reduce the impact mm -hmm. of a project like this. Which we did talk about in the very beginning, way back in 2019. Maybe things have changed, but they didn't want to do that back then because they said there wasn't the money to be made unless they went to that side. We've already changed it since then. All right. So, is our task right now to finish completing this form? It is. Like the immediate task? It, the immediate task, just to yeah. refocus on, on Seeker. We're at the point of project review where your town code in reviewing PDDs requires the board, and you did designate yourself as a lead agency, to make a Seeker determination before this moves to public hearing. It's the way your code is written. So in doing that, Wayne has reviewed all the project documents, the environmental assessment form, part one, 
all the technical <coughs> information and has prepared draft responses in part two for your review and discussion. That's where you're at. The part two is used to make the secret determination. And again, the board's goal will be either to determine that there is not the potential for significant adverse environmental impacts. If you determine that, you'd adopt a negative declaration that would end the environmental review process under secret. If you determine that there is the potential for at least one significant adverse environmental impact from the action, then that would be the basis to adopt a positive declaration. When you adopt a positive declaration, that simply means there's more environmental review. There's a requirement to prepare a full environmental impact statement. The purpose of that is to analyze issues that you deem to be significant, large or moderate, in, in a more detailed fashion. And there's some more procedure associated with going through the EIS process. So again, procedurally, it's to make the secret determination based on the information in the record, the part one information, assistance from Wayne in reviewing that, to determine either a positive declaration or negative declaration. And last month we went over this line by line and we had two that we discussed and we asked them to do these renderings and they have right so that's well that's how we're here today well we also didn't make wayne pre-filled in the form and that doesn't mean that we filled in the form but we so, went over every every line well we didn't complete it but we're not talking completely because we left those two you oh. brought up some i think some very good points tonight so if anything, it seems to me medium impact is at least, is that kind of where you were leaning towards? Is that there's at least a medium impact? I mean, I respect your opinion. I understand what you've written here and how you want to guide us. I just have additional concerns, I guess. So with regards to the, I guess the uh, wastewater, we've got 9,000 gallons a day. And you said there's a hundred foot buffer between the system and the wetlands. It just seems close. I mean, just think about what we just talked about at the beginning of the meeting with the Algonquin septic tank, septic field <coughs> has spread out to that whole area where we're spending five, or we're proposing to spend $5 million to try and fix the water problem based on cleaning solvents we use at, you know, in a, in a septic area. It seems close. What's the setback? What are the state setbacks for, for that? 100 foot separation. But again, those are after treatment. You're in septic tanks, you're in pump chambers, you're, you're, you're sending out to three different beds, different portions over three to four times over a day. Water gets cleaned in your septic tank, it gets cleaned and filtered when it goes down through your, your septic field as well. So there's there's the reason DC has those separation, you know, it could be clean, cleaner, filtered water by the time if you ever had a problem. Right. The idea is the way we design them and Wayne reviews them is you're not going to have that issue just in case they provide these 100 foot separations. On a septic field, what is the distance where we're proposing to put the fields now? What is the distance between the fields and the wetlands? 100, 100 feet or greater. I think we're pretty close to 100 feet. The buffer, the buffer, that 100 foot buffer kind of comes up to one of the, that's uh, right. it's the, the absorption points. Yeah, right? And what are you treating the water for? That water is just <laughs> standard household waste. So it's no different than all of your septic fields. It's just that we have them on, on 48 units. It's not, it's not like a, like an industrial use where you have to treat hazardous waste is um, still a residential building. It's just um, big. In theory, it's no different than your septic fields. Other than your one, this is 48. So there's a fourplex or an eightplex. It's larger, but that's why we have three separate beds that we have to time dose each one of those beds over different time periods. So that's really, it's exactly what you're pumping out of your house. So. I'm assuming someone here has a septic field within 100 foot of a wetland. Honestly, we're following new guidelines. A lot of homes here didn't have them, so you probably have septic fields five feet off of it. But, but if you had a, a single home 
with a hundred foot buffer is a lot different than if the units dropping in. Correct. No, not. No, it's no because our fields are sized accordingly to take care of those 50 fields. So it's, it's no different. This is going to have better protections than probably any home in this here that's probably older than 30 years old. This has got better have protections. Have to sure. the creek. Yeah. Where there <laughs> because of the size, because of the size too, and the amount of uh, discharge <laughs> from the septic, um, he's going to need a species permit from DEC to operate. So, how do we procedurally go about saying what the board feels is the level of on this on these two questions that we left? Right. So, first thing I did want to say is. Well, you said you respect Wayne's opinion. Understand this is a, a determination of the board. You simply use Wayne for technical support in making that decision. Okay? And while he's filled out a part two with draft responses based on his review, the determination is the lead agencies. You can't defer that to Wayne. You can't transfer that. That's this board's responsibility as a lead agency. When you discuss that, and based on those discussions, whether it's these last two questions in part two, whether it's questions on surface or groundwater, there, there needs to be some determination by the board as to whether that impacts, those impacts should be deemed on those specific questions in part two, none to small or moderate to large. That will then allow Wayne to revise, if necessary, the part two. Once that's in a form that the, the board, the majority of the board, uh, agrees with, then based on those answers, you make your positive declaration or negative declaration. So it's really based on the board's discussion on how those particular line items should be answered. Well, I personally agree with Jim that it's moderate to large. Do we take a vote on this? Uh, how, do we, how do we do this? I don't know that there needs to be a, a, a vote, just, you know, poll consensus discussion. Are we talking about the water, stormwater? What numbers are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, like number three or number four. Like this. Oh, yeah. I think it'd be a good idea for Wayne to walk you through both three and four again, just to confirm on the record where the board will be able to see on the <laughs> Item number three uh, discusses the proposed action and how it may affect one or more wetlands or other surface water bodies. Yeah. One, one, sorry. What page are you on? That's on page two. Okay, thank you. Item number three. Oh, two two because of the presence of the wetlands to the um, the application, the answer to that is yes. Going through each of the items there, um, the proposed action may create a new water body. Um, there's always been some discussion about whether a stormwater pond is a new water body or you're building a pond for you know recreation or industrial use, but um, say say the proposed action does create a new water body is that uh, based on the size of this new water body is that a, a small impact or is that a moderate one? No. Uh, stormwater ponds are typically not acres they're they're uh, i don't even know ten thousand yeah. square feet yeah, a single quarter acre so yeah not well far And I'll add as, as Wayne has gone through, the, the purpose for that water body, it's quarter of acre or whatever the size, is not an intended design feature. It's a requirement of the state stormwater program to retain, detain, treat stormwater that's generated from the proposed action so that it does not increase the quantity or impair the quality of the stormwater runoff from pre-building conditions. So while it's added to the site, it's added because of the state regulatory requirement imposed by DEC. In other words, the state is requiring people to build mosquito ponds. Correct. Well, that's one way to look at it, but yes, that, that, that is a requirement of the state stormwater program. Yeah. Um, 
I would deem a stormwater pond to be a, a small impact, as long as it doesn't fail in any way. Well, he's required to maintain it. He has to put together a maintenance plan as part of his stormwater pollution prevention plan. And the construction of the pond is such that even if there was a 14-inch rainfall, none of the logs would cave, letting it drain into the swamp directly. That's how a 14-inch rainfall? We had that. Well, we don't design for 14-inch rainfall. What's it designed for? Uh, Probably about six lane 100-year storm event. Yeah. So Irene was six, six inches. inches. Irene was 14 inches. So, but the but the structure of the pond and the walls are designed not to collapse under stressed That's situations. Right. Yes. Okay. Well, there's control. There'll be control structures there, so mm -hmm. you're not collecting all that water all at once. You have uh, structures there that attenuate it or it releases it, kind of like rocks in the stream. Kind of like that. Okay. And I'll also add, I'm not sure how the town has done this previously with stormwater facilities on this type of, maybe not with this type of facility. Uh, I would certainly counsel the town to consider having what's called a formal stormwater management facilities maintenance agreement, whereby the, tech, the property owner is obligated <coughs> to continually inspect, maintain, repair, file inspection reports periodically with the town. The town is what's called an MS4 community. They have certain responsibilities under the state stormwater program. The way to ensure that compliance is through an enforceable agreement. It does require oversight by the town. Uh, they will need to get the inspection reports in periodically. They need to be reviewed. If repairs need to be made, they need to be made. The town will have an enforcement mechanism in that agreement. I remember with other developments that we've had, there was also a fund that set up to make sure that there was money available to pay for any maintenance work that had to be done, especially over time as possibly bulldozing and other heavy machinery had to be part in. Um, Is that something that's typically done for this? We did a uh, drainage district um, for a couple of these. The last one we did was on. Um, Right, so I'm not sure if the, the board would require a drainage district here. Generally, drainage districts would cover like multiple, a multiple lot of subdivisions. And right. this, this would be like one project site, one owner, one operator. In those types of cases, generally, the town does not take over those facilities like they do within a drainage district. So they remain private. They're responsible privately to be operated, maintained, repaired. The enforcement mechanism is the stormwater agreement. Generally, my experience has been in those situations, there is not a bond or an economic deposit with the town. What those agreements would include is that the town could enforce those stormwater requirements. And if the owner operator fails to do that, the town can move forward and complete those and charge the applicant. The applicant continues to refuse to pay those charges. The agreement allows for the relevy of that so it becomes part of their next relevy on the tax bill. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. There, there's mechanisms in place to cover the town. Do we have any drainage districts in town? We do it for subdivision. Which one is on now? I thought there was one recently that probably well, the amendment to the well, Meadows was drainage district area. law. Yeah. Right. Right. So yeah. I think in that case that there was a drainage district form. Mm -hmm. Although I don't I don't recall. The approval of such a district would be by this board, so we could check that. And that was an MS4. Right. It would certainly get reviewed by the, the Tracy as the MS4 officer, and then once the town takes it over through the district. <coughs> The town owns and maintains those drainage facilities and charges the district properties on the tax bill for that. It was quite a of those to set up the fund. Yeah. And there's an escrow account, I believe. Yes, sir. There's an initial escrow to get you going right. before your next tax bill goes out because then the district charges are levied through your tax bill. That's right. Yeah. And that's one more thing. I, in my mind, I kind of have like 
weighing two different things. One is the engineering, one is the comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. I don't think it fits in within the comprehensive plan. So how much weight does that carry when you're thinking about doing positive or negative? Well, that's predominantly the two questions on right. part two, right? That, that's where those factors come in about consistency with community plans and cons consistency with existing community character. Those, those really focus on that. I, I view these earlier ones, Wayne, you can correct me if you think I'm wrong, that these are more of the objective technical right. engineering issues. Yeah. yeah. I think those last two items are more subjective than, yeah. yeah more, more policy driven, correct? Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's usually policy driven, comprehensive plan and zoning laws and kind of That's why I said two different. Yes. <laughs> But note that each of those is a separate environmental impact issue. You've got your technical objective issues, but community character, visual impacts, consistency with community plans, those are identified as environmental impact issues under seeker in and of themselves. Okay. I'm just going through the rest of these quickly. The proposed action will result increase or decrease of over 10 percent or more than a 10 acre increase or decrease in the surface area of any body of water you know, that's what you know. proposed action will involve dredging more than 100 cubic yards of material from the left end of the water body you know. proposed action may involve construction within or adjoining a fresh water wind or in the bed or banks of any other water body so we're not constructing in any uh, freshwater wetlands, nor any streams or lakes. Proposed action may create turbidity in a water body either from upland erosion runoff or by disturbing bottom sediments. Technically, during construction, the potential is there to create turbidity, um, but that's mitigated by uh, uh, temporary soil erosion sediment control. Uh, that's required by DDC for the site. That gets monitored through the SWIP inspections. That's correct. Um, proposed action may include construction of one or more intakes or withdrawal or water from surface water. We're not we're not drawing any water from from the wetland or any <coughs> other water bodies. Proposed action may include construction of one or more outfalls for discharge of wastewater to surface water. Uh, they aren't discharging wastewater to surface water. It's uh, being uh, handled by uh, on-site uh, sewage disposal system. Proposed action may cause soil erosion or otherwise create a source of stormwater discharge that may lead to siltation or other degradation of receding water bodies. Again, the potential is there, um, and that's mitigated by um, having the proper uh, soil erosion or pollution control measures in place. Um, as required by DEC and through the strict inspections. Proposed action may affect the water quality of any water bodies within or downstream of the site. Again, um, it will be it will be mitigated by the, by uh, stormwater ponds and uh, requirements of DC to um, to attenuate and, and make sure the water quality is there. And, and, and manage uh, the discharge on site before it's discharged. So. My only concern with that question is that that may be true when we consider this over time. If this isn't done correctly, that may not be true. And I know that there's enforcement mechanisms, but it's just something I would be concerned about. Because not everything is always maintained the way it was when it was built brand new. But an agreement could be reached, or an agreement would be reached. 
and it's given to ensure that enforceable agreement. Right. Which the town has the ability to do inspection. Yeah, actually towns that are MS4 actually have probably a little better uh, handle on managing that than some non-MS4 towns. Just a concern. Yeah. Appreciate coming up here. Thank you. Uh, the proposed action may involve the application of pesticides or herbicides and in and around any water body. Um, again, it's something that you can't control, but it's not, it's not like a uh, facility where you need to, to use pesticides or herbicides. So, Say in the event that um, that was the case, that it wouldn't be any more significant than any other development uh, or residential development. Agree with that. You're just thinking potentially things for mosquito control or proper drain, things like that. Yeah, weed killer. But It is a legitimate issue. It comes up on many projects, particularly in close proximity to surface for bodies, and certainly the town would have the uh, authority to have conditions any land use approval that would limit or prohibit the use of certain pesticides or herbicides, and an applicant always has the ability to incorporate that into their application documents to resolve the issue. Say that. They'll find a non pesticide or non herbicide way to, to manage the vegetation and lawn runs. So that's an issue that comes up routinely and can be addressed. Through there are options, action. yeah. Correct. And the last one on uh, item three was the proposed action may require the construction of new or expansion of existing wastewater treatment facilities. Um, I've always interpreted this as you know, more larger scale industrial wastewater treatment facilities is what they're asking. Do um, you want to uh, expand that to uh, consider you know, on-site septic systems? You um, need to consider whether or not that's a large impact or a small impact. I, mean, I would consider it a small impact, you know, well maintained operational septic system. Certainly won't impact any you know, surrounding water bodies. Mr. Hardy, quick question. Okay, on the septic system, <coughs> do all three will be active at the same time for the rotation. Can you just clear that up? Yeah, so basically, through DEC and their very strict guidelines they have, you, you build three different beds out there. Each bed can handle 50% of the flow. So what they do is they have to use two, two beds because that handles 100% of the flow. One bed sits dry for six months, and then you continuously rotate those. So every six months, you turn off one bed, you operate the next two. So it keeps every six months, it gives a bed time to dry. So you're, you have capacity for 150% of what the daily flows are. And I can tell you as well, the flows that they have us use are about double what is going to come out of senior housing facility because we're involved with one in East Greenbush. I take the quarterly water meters and they tell us that we should be designing for 110 gallons a day. But we're using about 50 to 55 gallons a day. So I mean, even though we have three beds at 50%, they probably are like three beds at 75% because they're they just make us design to higher guidelines. So um, the beds will be oversized. Uh, in my opinion, and again, I'm taking accurate water meter readings from facilities that are on, on public water, just like we'll have here as well, because this facility is on public water. And you could easily, and you could, are you man, in East Greenbush, are you mandated to, re, to report to the municipal authority on that? Or how that's strictly in house or what? No, that site is on public sewer, but it's just, okay. I'm taking the data that I'm getting okay. from, because oh, we do these projects, so, and I'm not saying all senior housing, but different types of development. So, Anytime we have the capability to get actual meter readings, 
we try to get them so we can compare that. And you know, sometimes you're able to work with DEC or the county health department and say, look, there's three years of data here, so why are you making us build these things twice as big as what they need to be? So. Now, just again, over time, uh, there are many reasons why septic systems fail and leach fields fail. And when that happens, raw sewage could conceivably leak out. Is it possible that that would leak out into the wetlands? If, if not properly maintained, and again, no different than... I mean, yeah, I know it's one of those things that sometimes happens. Yeah. And people put the wrong things in the toilet, and the holes plug up in the leach field. <coughs> I mean, part of that is all about the maintenance issue and, and part of like the numbers and having 48 units, the idea is to have a full-time property manager out here that may be a leasing agent, it may be a person that's inside an office 20 hours a week, and it's also a person taking care of the ground. So this isn't something where there's not someone on here watching things that are going on, right? So if, if you're having issues with your pumps going, well, you have an alarm, you have a visual alarm and an audible alarm that's going to tell you, okay, you got an issue out there, go out and address it, you know? So again, when you start talking, boy, can we go down to 24 units or 36 units? If you start taking away a very important amenity of having someone on site almost eight hours a day out there, you probably could, but is that really what you want to do? You know, on a high class project like this, your answer is absolutely not. You'd like to have somebody there keeping the grounds up, salting sidewalks, whatever it may be, you know? So but if there was a failure, would it leak, could it leak into the aquifer or into the I'm sorry, into the wetlands. Is that well, potential for going downhill into the wetlands? Well, think think about um, when an absorption bed fails. It usually uh, fails because you're not getting percolation anymore. Right. Um, either your material you put in there for to get the perk, um, either your and then it usually rises to the top. And then it would probably go over and flow into the wetland. So that is a possibility. To, it would have to go, yeah, it would come up. Because this is a bug. At that time, you, you know you got a serious problem. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But this is significantly above the wetland. And it's all downhill to it. Is that correct? From the leach fields, uh, yeah, the they, they are, yeah. are similar to a house, right? I mean, your wetlands are always at the low spot. You're always building up from the wetland at least 100 feet away. Cause that's what okay. you see in the county health department. What is, what is the quality of those wetlands? Are they? Is there standing water there? Or is it mostly vegetation? And it's mostly Army Corps wetland vegetation. And the standing, the standing water is probably no, 200 the feet away from. Yeah. Yeah. And the pond, I believe you guys dug. It can right. be, it can yeah. be very, it's very walkable. A lot of the wetlands we uh, had, we were right. raising right now, our Right now it's probably it wet because it's been raining yeah. so much. Right. Right. But it, you take in the it's summer, not water all, all the time. You take in the summer when it's dry, the pond doesn't even flow because there's not enough water there above ground to keep it. It's so, like, and, and a lot of the wetland areas where we were pasturing our horses, it would if you would look at it, it doesn't look like wetlands. It looked like right. just a regular right. hay, hay pasture. I'd hay it and everything else in the summer because it would dry up to where you could drive a tractor and everything on it. Because DEC, you know, if, as a farm, <coughs> they, go they allow plants. us to pasture and we can actually grow crops in the wetlands. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, yes. they go by uh, soil, right. soil type, or right. vegetation, right. yeah, and drainage. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, you go down back, and way, yes, way back. there's water way back, but there's not, especially in the summer when it's warm, it, it dries up. So again, procedurally, the question here is on any of these individual items under three that I just put through or four. It's been prepared in draft form to indicate that those items are small, either no or smaller types. But if the board majority would like those changed to moderate or large, then that needs to be discussed so the form can get finalized before you act. Uh, we can go through item four now for your consideration again. Um, 
proposed action may result in new or additional use of groundwater or may have the potential to introduce contaminants to groundwater or an aquifer. I think um, we've already talked about this, that there is an aquifer uh, below the site. Um, is the potential there for introducing contaminants? And in this case, the contaminants <coughs> There's a failure of the system. I don't, you're not really impacting groundwater. Um, I'm just trying to analyze this as we go along. But um, it, it's not like uh, we're like we're introducing chemicals to the groundwater. It's more organic or biological. Uh, proposed action may require new water supply wells. The answer is no. Water supply demand from proposed action may exceed safe and sustainable withdrawal capacity rate of the local supply. The answer to that is no. You're on the municipal water system. Proposed action may allow or result in residential uses in areas without water. That's no. Um, but there are, it is without sewer services. Proposed action may include or require wastewater discharge to groundwater. That's a no. Proposed action may result in the construction of water supply wells in location where groundwater is. No. Proposed action may require the bulk storage of petroleum or chemical products over groundwater or aquifer. No. Proposed action may involve the commercial application of pesticides within 100 feet of portable drinking water or irrigation sources. Can you go back to the petroleum one? How, how sure. is this building going to be heated? What, what is it going to be fuel or propane? So natural, natural gas in the area? No, 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 no probably no, the so biggest push probably, lately seems to be electric heat pumps. So. But that has not been determined yet. Uh, that's correct. Okay. Because if it was oil, I have a lot of time at home and for building that size, it would be substantial amounts yeah. of oil that have to be yeah, that's that's right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that really can't answer, be answered yet. Because um, they don't know what type of heating system they're putting. Well, we know it definitely wouldn't be oil. Right. That, that would be a definitely not oil. I doubt it. I don't know. I doubt it would even be propane. Yeah, it would be heat pumps. Probably it would be all heat pumps. Yeah. Yes. So it would be electric. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Um, so that's it for impact on groundwater. Um, for the board to consider um, how we've got that draft. So, in three and four, any changes from what this man has come up with or discussed? Just still thinking about it. Okay. Excuse me. I, I, mean, I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any changes as far as I'm concerned. That's you're saying required wastewater discharge. That's raw wastewater discharge. Yeah, we're not discharging wastewater. Thank you, Frank. June, anything at three four? With your comments previously, right? Yes. Thank you. Which, Eric? On your comments, which ones and three and four? I'm focusing mainly on that I don't think it fits in with the comprehensive plan. Okay. 
I think they're all noticeable. I think. David, it sounds like it. Yes. Okay. okay. So no change in three and four. Thank you. Um, I assume we agree on the rest of these until we get to the last two. What's that? What numbers are the last two? Uh, it's on page 10, and number 17 and 18. Gotcha. <laughs> the proposed action is not consistent with adopted, adopted land use plans. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is a comprehensive plan in draft form uh, that does uh, say that the town should provide for senior housing. Uh, I don't think it's in the 2006 comprehensive plan. There is, some mention in the there is something mentioned in the 2006. So, but that comprehensive plan doesn't include the senior housing plan. says the proposed action land actions land use components may be different from or in sharp contrast to current surrounding land use patterns so over there you have, across the street you have the, the largest industrial plant in the town right which is zone commercial right right up the road you have um an area that become um space for large equipment to be stored you know, on one side of the road, you go to maybe a half quarter mile or, or a half a mile, you get to the largest car apartment complex in the town. And if you go to the, the other part of the road, you get to a youth detention center that's just outside of town. So yeah, I'm glad it's not part of that, but it certainly fits in to what should be considered no or small impact. It's an improvement, no doubt, in that character. And then all the rest of it's surrounded by single town house. I think we need to separate 17 and 18. Um, I know there's some things that kind of seem like they overlap, but we have to kind of stick strictly to what they're asking us um, on consistency with community plans. All right, because 18 talks about inconsistent with the predominant architectural scale. In character and two stories 30 feet is not inconsistent with uh, the character of that community. How is that not inconsistent? You have two stories when all the other houses are just only residential houses. Right but they're all two, two stories. Story they're all two they are two stories. Right? Exactly. But it's still not that size. Well, my, my our house is 100, 100 feet, feet long. This will be yeah. 200 right. feet long in each section. So it's double the size of my own house. And let's make this about what the people want, not what the board is all about. I mean, give it a chance. That's why we're here. I, I, I think we need to stay to some environmental yeah. impact. Yeah. Yeah. My, my opinion is it is consistent because it is two stories. It's only 30 feet tall. It's been scaled back from what it was originally proposed. It's fixing with the character of of that community with other houses just like it and we have a rendering i think we had a rendering a few years ago and it's definitely within the character of the community in my opinion and it's mine
I mean, if you go through the list, basically you're answering now to all of the sub questions in 17. I will say no to everything in 17. That's it. Yes, I think they're both moderate. The uh, 18E and the 17A. I don't think you can say that it's no or small impact. I think it's a moderate impact. They are not really consistent with the residential area. The ones that you know the Astros fund. The ones that are on the answer. Do you have to? Yeah, I know I do. My only questions are on 17 a and 18 b and Okay. We'll start over we'll with 17. Why don't you read it? Okay. The proposed action, proposed actions, land use components may be different from or in sharp contrast the current surrounding land use patterns. And that's taken from the context of being in consistency with community plan. Or, or the surrounding community. What, what's, what's there now? Well, it's with the community plan. Whatever community plans plan. are in <clears throat> place. The plan. It's in a residential and agricultural zone, so to me it's moderate impact. That's how I see that. We do have a copy of the section of the, the EAF um, workbook. workbook. <laughs> um, In your analysis, they ask questions like, what is the scale and size of the project site in comparison to current land uses? Is the structure larger and taller? On a different lot size, very different land use, or an architectural design that is in sharp contrast, cited on the parcel in a very different manner? Is the intensity of the proposed similar different from surrounding uses? Will there be more people at the site than surrounding uses, more traffic? More structures on the lot, less green space. Um, in the analysis, um, under small impact, a small impact could occur. The proposed project is not consistent with surrounding land use patterns, but the community has specifically zoned the area for those new uses, and the project is consistent with those community laws and goals. Okay, so, so that is if it's already zoned for that use. Correct. Okay. So that, if, if it doesn't exist, like the surrounding right. land uses, but the municipality has determined through its comp plan and zoning law that these kind of uses should be allowed there, then even though it's in sharp contrast right. to existing, then it would be. 
consider small. Let me describe moderate to large. A moderate to large impact could occur if the proposed project is not consistent in its proposed use. Dimensions of the lot, dimensions and locations of structures, setbacks, size of the structures, accessory uses, overall scale and intensity with existing land uses, and local laws and plans encourage maintenance of such existing uses. Proposed action will cause the permanent population of the city, town, or village to grow by more than 5%, which um, That's kind of what they look at for uh, minor to large impacts. They basically restate that in every, <laughs> in every one as they go down through. And that's really what I go by when I do this analysis. I look at the, the workbook. I look at some items have um, uh, quantity thresholds. Um, I look at that, like traffic, if there's more than you know, 100 cars an hour, which there won't be, um, that kind of thing. Thank you, Wayne. Well, it's really not my opinion. <laughs> it's it's basically what I go through the the workbook and, and draft this up in accordance with that. And not that this helps you at all, because it, it's somewhat circular, okay, but. Here, understand the underlying zoning law, your land use code, does not permit this use there. But in the very same land use law, it provides for plan development districts. So you identified a plan development district as something the board may consider through the land use review process. So in that respect, the PDD is consistent. But within your PDD review standards, it's consistency with the comp plan. So then you have to take a look at the proposed action and compare it to what you read in your comp plan. So it is somewhat circular. It's not allowed in the existing zoning district, but a PDD is allowed as an appropriate land use tool within that same zoning law. But when you actually get into the substance of PDD review, it refers you back to the comp plan. So that's why I think the board may be looking at this and you're taking the appropriate time and, and consideration on the point, but it's not an easy one. That's why certainly within your board's discretion and opinions may vary. Thank you, Andy. We probably should make decisions on these things. Okay, 17. I just, uh, I was waiting on Frank. I'm, okay, and Frank, you, June, do you want to speak up, please? And if you wanted to. Okay. Give Frank time. So, if I go back to the PDD 150-91E, shall be in conformance with the town comprehensive plan, like Andy said. So, if I look at those action items in the comprehensive plan, then it states that it has to fit harmoniously into the town that are compatible with established neighborhoods conserves natural resources, waterways, aquifer, agricultural lands, and family farms. Complements rural character of the town. We have to look at the cumulative effects of the development on water, sewage disposal, soil, scenic qualities. And then we're also supposed to regulate the and density of land development on areas requiring special protection to protect drinking water and the aquifer. So those are reasons for me that come into play on those community plan items. Therefore, moderate. I would say moderate. That's your opinion. Okay. That's my opinion. All right. Right. On which all three A, 17A, 18E, and 18F. Is that what you're? Yes. The ones that aren't checked. Right. 
Right, and while Wayne is correct, those are two different items, one dealing specifically with community plans, one dealing specifically with the character of the existing surrounding uses, all of those are related. Think about that. Your town plan talks about community character and surrounding land uses. So those those concepts are related. You're up, Frank. <laughs> I have to take a pass for a What about you, Tom? I'm looking in. I realize what has been said by June. I'm also looking at changes coming. And on 17A, I'm going to go with small impact. I think Eric already said small, small, small mill. Your turn. There you go. <laughs> think an 18A E I mean as far as architectural scale and character I'm gonna say that's small I I'm really feeling a F on 18 and 17A on that ladder. All right, so we have one consensus is too, too small, three moderate. Based on that deliberation, that will allow Wayne then to complete the proposed part two for your review, including completing his memo supporting those part two answers, which would then, you would review that using that, then you'd make a determination of either adopting a negative declaration or positive declaration. Okay. So to summarize, <laughs> <laughs> uh, number 17, consistency with community plans, we say yes, the proposed action is not consistent with adoption, adopted land use plans, and item 17A is a moderate impact. The rest of the items are no to small. Is that correct? That is correct, Mike. Uh, number 18, consistency with community character. The proposed project is inconsistent with the existing community character. We're saying yes. And of the items below, <coughs> we've indicated there is a moderate impact on item E. No, F. 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 And the rest are no to small. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so I can complete the uh, part two um, and present that to the board for uh, action because there's other pieces of this that have to be done. All right. That part two was the important record basis for making your determination. Once that's in front of you and proposed by the form, you can then actually take action and make your secret determination, and then you should be ready for presumed your next meeting. Do you want to do that at the workshop or at the full um, Just as a practical matter, not that it's been scheduled yet, but two weeks from tonight. Continuation of the public hearing on the water district. So it's within the board's discretion on how you want to handle this. And there was the opportunity for a special meeting or a next regular meeting in May. How about the next regular meeting? So I'll complete the part two and I'll draft up a part three. Correct. Why not do it for uh, the workshop in two weeks? I mean, I know it's a 
that workshop isn't exclusively I, I'm okay for with that. that public here. You might have to wait another two weeks after that. But I still think it should be <clears throat> workshops. But I'll put my hand on your shoulder. It should be a workshop. Go no away for a specific purpose. <laughs> Just as a practical matter, it's it's proposed to be, and that's fine. You can conduct business wherever. Proposed to be at the fire department. Fire department, yes, sir. And they have a continuation of the public hearing. Yeah. yeah. Not anticipating anything, but there may be some public comment that substantial public comment. Yes. We call boss. I might do some special meeting at that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really it's like, exactly. How much time do you need? Mike? I'm not trying to I'm not trying to put you on the thin point here. But well the hard work is done. <laughs> that, it, I can have something before the board prior to the workshop. I'm sure Andy and I will have to consider Yes, Andy, what's your what's your availability? Say on the 16th. Did you say the 16th? No, the 28th. Oh no, the 28th. Okay, the 28th. I'm sorry, why that? One option for the, the board 18th, to uh, then uh, well the 18th is difficult. I know both and Wayne and I would have a a conflict. Thank you. Okay, so that rules that out. So one option for the board to consider would be right now your continuation of the public hearing is proposed to be seven o'clock. You, you could meet prior to that at six thirty. Yes, that was going to be the next question. Sure. Would we probably at six thirty on the eighteenth? No, sir. On the twenty fifth. On the twenty fifth. I'm sorry, Wayne, was that good? I'm okay with the 25th. So, you were good with that? What other things are you scheduling for the workshop? Public hearing. Anything else? I have to be very think, sensitive because I've had too many late meetings, and that is the that is my right. concern. And, there's and, a, and the bill there could be a lot of people there. I, I, I realize that, but this is important. I'm starting at 6 30. I think it'll give us a half hour. And if I Limit it to the water district and paying the bills and final and going with. The Mike, again, one thing again, to your discretion is if you schedule the special meeting for 6 30, this would be your agenda item. I'm not sure it would take the full half hour, but it would give you ample time to review and have Wayne step through the balance of the secret determination. Right now, the public hearing would propose to commence at 7 o'clock, and then that would be a reasonable meeting. We haven't asked the fire company about what they're doing That's true. Okay. We might, to start okay. there. I'm not trying to step on toes. I know I've already squared away for 7 p.m. Would it be a possibility to go at 6.30 at your facility? You've already checked with Donnie at 7? Yes, he has told, he has told me that he has I don't think that half hours. I don't think it's going to make any difference. I will check with him. Check with him. To be sure. I'm going to check, but I can't check with him until tomorrow morning. Right. I, 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 I don't think there'll be a problem. No, he had, we had talked on the 25th a couple of times, and he was good with that. Okay, board members, can you make it at 630? Yeah, I <clears throat> I'm not sure. I'm, not, I'm sure you're a very busy, very busy business lady. Is that a, okay. and that's on people's smart Rest time from work. <laughs> if I have to, Tom, then I need a raise. That's okay, Dan. We'll get you to a chair. No problem. Okay, of course. Something along those lines. Okay, Andy, no problem. No, it's just Wayne. It's okay with me. Thank you very much. Okay, six thirty, and I was double, triple check with. Fire department tomorrow morning and making sure that 6 30 is available with the shoe hearts and Mr. Yes, Hart yes. being up first. Yes. Okay, and then what a situation will start after well, after seven o'clock. Okay.
and, and there won't be anything else to build payments on that day. Okay, I promise. Yeah, I've heard that. Mm, I know, I know. <laughs> but that's what we're Okay? Very nice. I'm sorry. You can make, excuse me for, my, for being rude and not asking you. Are you available? Mr. Yes. Hart, are you available? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. Well, I, my goal is to have something to the board in advance of that meeting, so they'll have a chance to look at it. Please and thank you. So we're not deeply appreciating it at the time. Thank you, Wayne. And thank you for Is there anything else, Tom? Tonight. We appreciate the over here as quick as you did. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. And Tom, can you confirm at 6.30 that you could shoot me an email confirming that? Yes. Availability? But I won't be able to talk to you guys about that part. No, no, no. no. That, what I don't think we do is just do a special meeting notice to start at 6.30. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, one and all. Okay. Next item up is the action items. Local law number three, amending the town and posted the land use law that you've already had some discussion on. And am I out of line here? Anybody having Mr. Basil step up and say something since you reserve time, or should you wait to the end? Well, that's within your discretion. Okay. The board, will the board allow Mr. Basil to speak first? Thank you, Mr. Basil. Please, podium. Thank you. I forgot what I was going to say. I was so intrigued. Again, Lou Basil, I haven't changed. Uh, local law number three. It's amending the uh, land use. And uh, I believe it arrived because the planning board on the last uh, project down on off of Spring Avenue, uh, they kind of saw a glitch in our lawn. It does have to be changed. Uh, however, I think the change should be made from here on out. Anybody that's in the pipeline should not be affected by this law. For example, these people have been coming to these meetings for four and a half years. Four and a half years. <laughs> okay, what's a year? <laughs> <laughs> They've been coming five and a half years. Now we're going to be changing this land use law because maybe it should have been changed years ago. Nobody caught up with it. Whatever. But I really think in all honesty, that this board should consider, not consider, it's their duty that anybody's got an application in now prior to whenever you adopt this law should not be affected by it. I mean, this is going to put a hurt on these people if this law is adopted and it goes backwards. And uh, I really think in good conscience, if you're changing the law, which probably should be changed, should have been changed maybe a long time ago, just nobody caught it, except the planning board at one time. And, uh, you know, to have them lose four or five years, and not only, it's just not the time, I'm sure they got a little bit of money tied up, a couple yeah. hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> and a few and, years. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, uh, but anyways, I think this board should really consider if you adopt this law to make it from here on out and and not anybody who's got a application and especially an application that has been, from what I've seen, more than 50, 75 percent complete, whatever. I, I don't think they should be penalized and that it will be a big penalty on them if you adopt it going backwards. Just, Thank you very just much saying. for your opinion, Mr. Bale. We appreciate your time. Have we, do, have we had the public hearing on this one? Oh, my. Well, it's just, it just shouldn't be an action item. Right? It shouldn't be action items. Yeah. We need yeah. the, the formal 
introduction of the law is is an action the, and then setting the public right right so the action is just to introduce it to introduce it and then set a public hearing correct and the final form of the law isn't going to be until after the public hearing no the, this is the proposed final form okay um, once introduced in the public hearing schedule then the public hearing is held on this based on those public comments the board has several options. It could choose to adopt the law in its current form. It could choose not to act. It could choose to modify the law. If there's a substantive modification to the law, it would go through the reintroduction and the further public hearing. So how would their situation fit into that then? Would it be a modification? No. So Right now, the, the local law. Because we went ahead is, saying like, is, that everybody would be affected. That's correct. So in the current form, yep. this would apply so to that. all applicants, even those that in are currently in the review process. Yep. If the board were to adopt this law in this form, if, if the law supports the conclusion that it would be applicable to the current applications being reviewed. Okay, so that they would need to comply with the law and more particularly, this board, the general rule is the board needs to apply the law at the time of their decision, not at the time of the initial application. So if you adopt this law in its current form, you'd be bound to follow this law, which includes a limitation on the density, even as with regard to PDDs. That would be, you would need to follow that, okay? If at the public hearing you hear a, a, a number of comments, you choose to modify that provision, we've discussed this, you have the ability, you have the discretion to include a provision in your law that would limit the application of the law to applications filed on or after its effective date. You could choose to do that. You can do that at any time, even after the public hearing. <clears throat> if you chose to make that change to the law, you would simply reintroduce it and go through a further public hearing before you that. Or you could choose based on the public hearing and hear public comments not to move forward at all. Okay. And that's an option. I have um, a question. Uh, the purpose of this law is so that you cannot use unbuildable land as part of your density calculation. So you mentioned the applicant that has the PDD proposal. How would this affect them specifically? how much of the land that they're using for the density calculation is uh, unbuildable, unusable land or who? Uh, that's a question for Wayne. Okay. It, it, it's really technical on the, the acreage of the wetlands, slopes, right? you know, floodplains, things like that. And that would be the entire parcel, right? But understand, in the proposed local law dealing with PDD development. The provision uh, is unless the project site is served by public water, the calculation is as proposed for all projects. This would be a product of PDD that would be served by public water. So this is under a further provision in this proposed law. The project site is served by public water. The density calculation process described in this local law shall be followed to calculate the site's base density. However, the town board may in its sole and absolute discretion and in consideration of the factors set forth in this law also authorize a density bonus up to but not exceeding 25% of that base density. So it does put a cap on your discretion in terms of the number of units, even in a PDD context. So the first thing you need to do is calculate that base density, and that's the technical issue. Wayne can help you with that. Because the project site in this case would be served by public water, you could allow a 25% increase to that base density, but this law would cap it. Okay. I don't remember talking about 25% of that provision. Did we? Yes. Sir. Yes. That's better now. So this is. So could we ask Wayne to 
make that calculation then and see how it affects? Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. Very easily. Yes. I can call him tomorrow morning. I won't call him tonight, but I'll call him tomorrow morning. Well, my suggestion is I think section seven on page five, which is the effective date. The local law shall become effective immediately upon filing in the office of the New York Secretary of State pursuant to section twenty seven of the New York State Municipal Home Rule Law, right? So once that filed, then it's law. So I would make a motion that we amend that to and I look to Andy's guidance to say more applications upon this date moving forward so that we don't catch up this and I and right. regardless of the 25 percent and if the board chose to do that it wouldn't be within if within that section you would add a specific provision that says this law will be applicable only to applications filed on or after its effective date do I make the motion that we put that in there but that's what we voted down the last time well I'm trying to right. Um, I would like to see Wayne's calculation so we did know that where we stand and then we still have a public hearing, we have public comments, and like you say, we could modify it then. I, I would prefer to rent this upstairs. Yeah. I would prefer that we're going to have the public hearing, hear what the public has to say, obviously. and. Maybe that's not the only change you might want to make to the law. Or, as Andy said, we might, you know, just not do the law at all. So I'd rather, rather than just, you know, already got the work done, you know, the, the laws in the form, it's not binding at this point. So we go to the public hearing, we get that information from Lane, we get the input from the public, and we make a motion to change whatever it is that we deem to change at that point before we go on. And it might include more than that, maybe, you know, just <laughs> maybe instead of 25%, it'd be 50% or whatever. Maybe we'll see another avenue that makes more sense for everybody here. And just at least get the public input before we go changing something that hasn't really been vetted by the public. Well, motion's been made, so what's next? There's no second. If there's no second, then there's no further action on the motion. Okay, so proper procedure would be here, would be to put this on hold until information is gathered. No, we have to make it. No, we have to make it. Okay, I don't want to put it on hold. It's been introduced. So do you need a motion to introduce the legislation? We just need one member to formally introduce this proposed local law, and then the board as a whole can set a public hearing. Right. I'll introduce it. Thank you, David. So now we go forward and set public hearing. Correct. For the next town board meeting, Tom. <laughs> yeah, next time Not at the workshop. The workshop. <laughs> <so. laughs> yes, David. I was just looking at the calendar to double check myself, and that will be on May 9th. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, David. All right. Keep, please keep reminding me, David. So I want to screw that up. Yeah. Right. Thank we'll, you. We'll set that at 7 p.m. Please. That's, yeah, I'm sorry. I was going to call you, David. I'm That's right there. Okay. And if I can have you. Oh, print your name and sign where indicated. So this is the short environmental assessment form. Since this would be amended to your land use law, there is a short EAF for that action. And that should be the person that's just hold on to that. I'll just turn the lights on. It's the first time. Do I just look? Yep. Okay. So we have a public hearing scheduled for May 9th, re referencing local law number three. Thank you very much. Good night, Cindy. Okay, next item we have on the schedule is notice of continuation of the public hearing for proposed water district number two. Andy was gracious enough to put together <coughs> the formal resolution. 
And we also have the notice on a public hearing. <coughs> Discussion by the board. Um, I will just say that uh, after thinking a lot about this, more than just looking at the two, I, um, a pro I think we should drop it and not do it. And we can, I can explain it at another time if that's a better time. I don't have to do it now. Um, but I'm not going to stop anything with continuing a public hearing for it. I think we should have a public hearing. I definitely think we should have a public hearing. Other members of the board? Yes. Okay. We will have, okay, please. When we go ahead with the public hearing on April 25th, as scheduled at the firehouse, we thank the fire company for allowing us. The public hearing will be at 7 p.m. because the shoe hearts will become at 6 30 p.m. Right. on April 25th. So, what's in front of you is proposed resolution in order, which again goes through the procedural history. It does identify that the map plan and report proposed for Water District 2 has been revised and updated as of April 2024. Uh, it would be <coughs> identifying that as current map plan and report prepared by this board. It goes through the revised numbers in terms of cost to the typical property within the proposed water district. And so what this uh, resolution in the body would do is indicate that the public hearing, which had been open last year, will be continued on April 25th at 7 p.m. at the Post and Kill uh, Firehouse, that the appropriate public notice be posted and published in accordance with law, and I'll coordinate with Sue on that, and that a copy of the map plan and report is updated and described as Certainly in the office of the town clerk, I would certainly recommend that it also be available on the town website so that people can peruse that. And we will work with LaVerge to put together a more simplified version explaining the, the proposed economics of the district so that people understand the cost to the typical property. Well, they Thank should you also probably much. be on the website. That's correct. Yeah. 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 It was Mr. Question, Basil, please. There was a question brought up at the last public uh, the public hearing on the water district. Has the map planning report been adopted? Well, so that's a term that's generally not used within establishment of special districts. So what the law requires is that the board prepare a map plan and report and present that at a public hearing to create the water district. So a map plan and report has been prepared by the board through LaBerge. Initially, it was 2022, revised April of 2023, and now last revised as of April 2024. And this resolution identifies that that becomes the proposed map plan and report prepared by the board through its engineering consultant. I know that was a question. It was, was correct, yeah. It's, it's terminology, but yes, in fact, the town board has prepared the updated and revised map plan and report, and that will be the subject of the public hearing. Okay, Dave, you still want to, you want to uh, go for the resolution, or well, we don't have to. So there is a resolution. It does need to be offered and seconded for the public hearing. Okay, public hearing. hearing. No, go Correct. Right. You, you got it. Okay, here on the you board. got it, and I'll second it. Please and thank you. We have to rewrite this and then have a little roll call, right? Well, as the, if, if I may be allowed, as the tower is getting late, can I run through that quickly? Sure. Thank so, you. Again, yes, in, in terms of the initial recital clauses, it's generally, as I discussed, just going through the procedural history, including identification of the updated and revised map plan and report. It does go through now the cost of the district, uh, the available. Uh, federal, state, and county grant and funding, as well as the cost to the town. It does identify the cost of the typical property within the district. Uh, now, in the body of the resolution, one, that a meeting of the town board of the town post shall be held at the post firehouse 
uh, on April 25th, 2024 at 7 p.m. to continue the public hearing and consideration of the establishment of water district number two. All persons will be heard at that public hearing. Uh, number two, it's simply reviewing the town clerk's requirement to publish and post the notice of public hearing in accordance with law. And three, that a copy of the map plan reports available at the office of the town clerk, available for inspection during their business hours, also should be posted on the town website. And while not stated in here, we've discussed having the voters put together a summary page or two, particularly with respect to the costs that would be available at the town clerk's office and on the website as well. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Can I address the town board for a second? There, there, well, there, there is, I hate to do this, there is a resolution that's been offered and seconded and procedurally right now it's subject to the roll call vote. Sure. Thank you. Do you have a resolution number? Okay. Councilman Butler? Yes. Councilman Huss? Yes. Councilman Duzizi? Yes. Councilman Oliver? Yes. Supervisor Russell? Yes, please. Okay, so the public hearing is officially reopened on April 25th, 7 o'clock at the firehouse. Necessary information will be provided and put out for everyone's perusal prior to it. Can I say that? It's certainly within your discretion to take comment if you want. Mr. Gibbons, if you care to make a quick comment. I think, you answer, I think the board answered my question. Thank you very much, Mr. Gibbons. Okay, next item up is the resolution on adopting the Posting Hill Employee Handbook. And compliments again to you, June, for all the hard, long work that you've done to put this together. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'm going to put this on hold because on Andy's advice, he needs this to be in the final form to go along with the resolution. It wasn't to the board members in time for them to read it in this today. I do not believe. So I'm going to ask <coughs> this um, be tabled for the moment. And we won't go on the workshop, so then we'll move it forward on to the night. Um, we'll say, though, on the, um, on the health emergency plan, though, we made all the revisions that we talked about at the last meeting. Those were updated, so I'm confident in again, okay. Andy had a, a suggestion um, at the very end too that we changed. So we've made those modifications. So I would be good if the board members are good with um, mm -hmm. doing the resolution on that, that health okay. plan. With one modification. With one modification at the end, we said that no. We already did it. That was done. done. Okay. Yeah. Changed. All right. We need a resident motion. You can make the motion, too. <laughs> Please. Okay. Make the motion that we accept resolution number nine. No. A second. Health emergency plan. Second. Please. Okay. Yes. Councilman Haas? Yes. Councilman Brzezinski? Yes. Councilman Oliver? Yes. Supervisor Russell? Yes, please. <clears throat> okay. All right, the next item up is resolution approving, revised, and updated ARPA allocation. Andy's been gracious enough to go through it. There is some question on final numbers. Is there any possibility we can circulate? I mean, we have a sheet here, but I would just like to give the board members <clears throat> a little a couple of days to review it. Mm -hmm. And then can we bring it? I mean, he say this, David, but bring it up on the front desk. Why? <laughs> I, I know, David. Why don't just do it at the regular meeting? Is there a rush? Because it has to be in. Fine. Oh, you get that Okay. Sure. Satisfactory. Absolutely. Can this document also be attached to the resolution? Is that a Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
<coughs> when you go through that, obviously, so I've made it's in there for the dollar amounts. Once everyone's okay with those dollar amounts, they could be inserted into the into the resolution. So again, conceptually, when you're going through this, these were ARPA funds really identified within three groups. That which has been allocated, and within that, allocated and already spent, allocated and to be spent. And then the third item were either whether there was formal town board action or not, funds that were discussed or approved to be previously allocated that the board now seeks to reallocate to other eligible uses that would, if you will, bring your ARPA accounting up to date. So that would allow an updated report to be done by the end of April to the U.S. Treasury Department. And again, just to remind the board, the balance of your ARPA funds do need to be allocated by December 31 of this year and spent by December 31 of 26. So yes, that could be table. Thank you very much, Andy. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, okay, item F. And this is standard workday reporting and standard workday and reporting resolution for elected and appointed officials, Betsy Pino and Tom Russell. I have included a copy in each 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 file, something that we have to do for the New York State local retirement system. Our numbers have been compiled and entered. And because my name is on there, if someone else would care to talk, if you wish about this. No. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dan. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Make a motion to accept the document. I'll second. Thank you very much. All those in favor of accepting the document? Aye. Aye. All those abstaining? I'm sorry. All those opposed? All those abstaining. Four zero one. Thank you. Okay. Next item up is the library services agreement, which Andy was gracious enough to work with me on. Put this right away. We have to set this in motion and get take care of because of the payment that we made to the library for the services for this year. <laughs> I'll read again. Do, do I, can I jump in now, therefore? I'll read the whole thing. It, it, is that the service agreement? Mm -hmm. Service agreement. Yeah, you certainly don't need to read the whole okay. thing. There would it's simply be a motion to authorize the supervisor to execute the service agreement on behalf of the town. Do I have a motion to authorize? I'll make that motion. Thank you very much, Frank. I'll second. Can I second? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor of approving? Right. Thank you very much, David. Eric, June, thank, thank you very much. Carries five zip zip. Thank you, Sue. Okay, uh, supervisor's report. I had the pleasure of working with everybody here in referencing trying to get. The ARPA situation squared away, especially June and Betsy, especially Betsy, thank you. And uh, Andy has been most generous in his time and thoughts of giving on that. And uh, Owen Goldfarb, we thank also. Uh, we have, uh, there was a question came up about Bob Boyer, and he is back doing his job as he has been. Um, we had a little situation last Thursday night where there were a couple beautiful huskies up near the falls that had to be picked up by Sand Lake because the Sand Lake Animal Control Officer stepped in for Bob last night and that night and it came up that we do, we do not have a contract with Capital Agway for keeping dogs. Uh, and they are chock full 
there was a serious situation in the county and some type of countywide approach must be taken. I listened to what was said of the Capital Railway and uh, it's something that I think the county should, should look at and seriously address because they are, they are full and other similar services are full regarding storage of dorms. Uh, and it's, it's going late. And we have the upcoming public hearing. We had for Water District 2. Uh, we continue to get the information out. We'll be knocking on doors again, giving, giving slips to make sure everybody is aware of it so as to get the maximum number of people out to express their opinion in that particular <clears throat> water district. It, um, and everyone will get a chance to say something in proper time and not have one or two individuals uh, decide what is going to be done. Uh, that is basically all I have to say right now. Any attorney's report, please? A very brief version, not right? <laughs> no, no, we haven't. I'm serious, we haven't had you enough to <laughs> No, I disagree. We have. Yeah. <laughs> I'm overruled. Okay. Thank you. Sure, that's great. This worked on a lot of matters. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> the most appreciative of your effort, sir. Okay. Town clerk's report. During the month of March uh, 2024, town clerk took in $14,934.90. Of that amount, fourteen thousand eight hundred twenty-one dollars and seventeen cents was turned over to the supervisor. I move to accept the town clerk's report. Second. All those in favor of accepting the town clerk's report? Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Okay. Uh, next item we have is the assessor's report, and as I said. The, as June helped me earlier, grievance day is May 27. That is a very important day if you wish to come in. The assessor's office is open on Tuesdays and then Thursdays till 4, and then Thursdays from 12 until 7. You can call, you can pick the material, and Betsy and Michelle and Diane are most, most able to help you and do so in a very prompt fashion. So if you do have a situation with your revised assessment, they will jump on it and take care of it for you. Water Manager's report. Bill was gracious enough. We have a report in the file. Uh, new antennas are, have been failing. We have been starting replacement on them. There were six big safes done this month. And we're also receiving new permits to hook up to the water system, such as on 355. And as it is always, the cold form has been tested at Town Hall. Uh, in your packet, you will get, there is a estimate from Bill in referencing to cost on antenna, additional antennas. That is not, that is on order yet, but it is, but it is a request of what he thinks is needed. And it is also going to replace or have he has 43 or 40 yeah, say 43 of the antennas that will be taking back under credit and replacing those then he has money in his budget for this he week. has money plenty of money in his budget for that okay so i thank you for your consideration on that uh, questions or thoughts we want to hold up on what's his decision right we're right but i but i had a courtesy i check with him for him. okay thank you one and all for listening Okay, uh, next item we have well control, I'm sorry, building inspection report. <coughs> Tracy submitted his report. Um, one of the things in here is a quote from Snyder Printers on replacing the placard signs that he uses. And the he because of what has been used since he's been in there. He recommends going 500 lines down to 10 or so now. And uh, that is per unit, that is far, by far the most economical pricing on that. But that's for, for your review. And you can get back to me on that. Well, I'm recording it. Uh, door control report. I haven't talked to Bob. Uh, the only item I have is the two Huskies 
the proper to take care of Bob. He called me the next day and explained the situation why he was not available, but he's there all the other times. Uh, okay, and Tracy's report. It's a code enforcement officer has been working with town attorney regarding enforcement issues on board problem. And the score office has been working with the town engineer preparing and submitting required documents for the Department of Environmental Conservation pertaining to recent requirements of applying for an ENOI report for NSF work compliance and building code enforcement office and proposed to the fire department chief to discuss, to discuss unsafe abandoned building exterior identification for new fire related OSHA requirements, which going on request for building permits are increasing with the warm weather upon us and uh, building department code enforcement and the floor officers continue to assess <coughs> residents builders and other municipalities highway superintendent dj unfortunately was not able to be here tonight but he has a, a serious um, there was a member of his family in serious health and he is watching over that person and hats off to dj for his dedication to his grandfather, most commendable. He did support the report, things went well. Uh, and again, my compliments to the crew on the day of the power outage, on how well they performed, and the preceding weekend with the snow. And, uh, he runs a very good ship up there, and we're wishing the best. Okay, something new we have is from the Post and Field Historical Society. They submitted their quarterly report and <clears throat> okay uh they look okay membership yes they're always looking for members they could use them visitors to the center a couple people have stopped in on research in this particular case the here family old chad and john hope from troy uh, they have a current exhibit on old flag made by holy eyes on up over Columbia Hill, old Bibles and our bridge dictionary. Uh, acquisitions, they, they periodically pick up items for their display. And uh, there will be, yes, there will be a concert on the green on June 23rd, beginning at 2 p.m. This year's featured band is the Born Gray Band. Uh, as they're trying to appeal to everybody, and it's a serious effort on their part. In this quarter, they had a large uh, presentation about maple up on the hill back in the 40s and early in the 30s. Okay, David, please, if you can. I move that we pay the general bills of $17,036.21. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Move that we pay the water bills of $21,623.29. Oh. Thank you, Frank. All in favor? Aye. 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 And highway bills of $13,441.18. All second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Excuse me. Okay. Okay. Now we're going into private attorney client session for a brief uh, discussion. I thank everyone for their attendance tonight. Yes, we uh, Back to our dog control report of two Huskies found at the falls. Is that an unresolved issue? No, so they, that you will return the owner claim them the next day. Okay. Sorry, okay, so that's I just an information of here on that. Sandy, Channel Control Officer, did pick them up and they, were, uh, they found them home the next day. Yeah, I think I know where they came from. Okay, okay. Um, on the Post Hill Historical Society report of uh, Mapling on the hills from back in the 20s and 30s. Back, back in the 30s and 40s specifically, they were showing pictures and probably out of the record of activity by certain Is that already and taken place or is that upcoming? That it, was in their newsletter. it was in the newsletter. For, we only get the reports on a quarterly basis. Okay. So I just got the report for the first quarter and it was involved in the first quarter. Thank you. 
Um, this, this Sunday, this Sunday, from 12 until 4, we will have an open house at the firehouse on Main Street for New York recruit. Um, so if anybody wants to come down and see what we're about, come on down and maybe we can have a few people fill out applications. Okay. Sunday, 12 until 4. Yes. At the main station. Yes. Right up on the hill. Right. And it's a recruitment after an observation? It, it's, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure to recruit, but you will accept so the that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, New York State's doing a recruitment weekend this, this coming weekend, so. Right, we'll make sure we get it up. Thank you. It is on our our uh, Facebook page. Right now, is that upstairs? Firehouse yeah. Facebook page, so. But, and it's been on the sign, too. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, we thank everyone for their attendance and a very good evening to you. And we'll carry you down. Uh, I'll carry you up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now it's easy.